he did. He gets it to Henry. Welcome back to Great Sports Debates. A uh, quick recap, week one, we went 6-1-2 and two on our straight-up games. We hit both of our parlays, both of our prop bets that we gave to our members, as well as on a great start for our season picks, which we also gave to our members. So this week, it will be a little more interesting. We don't really have that many uh, heads-up games. But we do have several teasers, a parlay, and a few props for our members. But with that, let's get into it. I'll just give you a quick rundown on each game for week two and give you a feel of where we stand. Starting with Thursday night football. So this is a tricky one here. Miami is at home. However, Miami has not been able to get over the hump beating Buffalo. I want to say Buffalo's won 11 of the last 12 matchups. Now, granted, it's been a little different with the recent additions of Hill to, uh, however, they have not been able to get over this hump. So Josh Allen's lost a few pieces in offense, but he still put up over 30 last week. I have a hard time. This game could go, I could see it really going either way with some of the losses that Buffalo's head on defense and Miami being at home, but I have a hard time giving away points with Miami considering the history until they really do it. So there are some prop bets and some things we like on this, but that's not really going to be the line that we're betting here. Let me know what you think in the comment section. So up next, we got the San Francisco 49ers at Minnesota. I think this one feels like a little bit of an easier one. Uh, As far as just picking the game with the spread, we got San Francisco would take them minus six. That's a pretty good bet. Um, There's also a couple other things that we really like that we'll save for the members. And you can see what our actual bets are. The amount, what we did, what we paired it with. all for the members just join uh on the channel all right uh we got the raiders at baltimore as you know i'm not high on the raiders i think they're gonna really struggle on the offensive end for the reasons we've mentioned previously and baltimore has to uh bounce back and win this game i see them winning this game fairly easily uh it's tough because i want to say this is the biggest line at minus nine and a half i hate lines like this because Sometimes the team is more than that number better, but they just don't get, you know, they don't have to, you know, say Baltimore's up by eight and they have the ball. They're not going to go down and score if they can just run out the clock. But that being said, I think Baltimore can definitely cover nine and a half. Uh, The under could be something you look at as well, but uh, Baltimore should win big here. And we have a couple of additional bets on this for members as well. Next up, we got the Jets at Tennessee. Uh, This is a tough one. I don't see either of these teams really scoring a whole lot. The offenses don't look great. Uh, You know, granted, the Jets were playing San, San Francisco, but, you know, still they had some drops and some fumbles. And then, you know, Tennessee has Will Levis, so that kind of speaks for itself. Plus, both of the teams allegedly have good defense. We know the Jets' defense is good despite all the points they gave up to San Francisco. Someone was trying to tell me earlier this week that uh, Tennessee's the number one defense. I don't know if that's by current stats because they played the Bears week one. But definitely like a low-scoring game here, so points are at a premium. Uh, I'd probably avoid if you you know, you get that three and a half. So, like I said, points are at a premium. You know, if this... If this line continues to grow, you know, I'd definitely like to look at Tennessee's way there. All right, this is going to be an interesting one. My uh, my initial thought was, you know, Green Bay has a talented roster. And if they're getting points at home against Indianapolis, I could see a high-scoring affair. 
And then I remembered that the backup I believe they're going to play is Malik Willis. And he's been pretty awful. So with that in mind, I'd lean the uh, Colts way minus three here. I just don't trust Malik Willis. He's been beyond awful anytime he's touched the field. Next up, we got the Saints at the Cowboys. I think this is a mismatch. I think the Cowboys win by at least seven here. I, I, Carr's not going to have all the time that he had against Carolina, nor is their offense going to get as many opportunities. So I got Dallas here like 27 to 20, uh, but I think they should be able to win at home comfortably by at least a touchdown. Seahawks at the Patriots. This is low scoring. If you jumped early, you might have been able to get on an under here. But that number is really no, low at this point at 38. So, you know, if the teams were both completely abysmal, you know, you could look at that. But, you know, when you talk, start talking about 38, you're, you're at a really low number for today's NFL. And, you know, in a game where the Seahawks could wind up running up the score a little bit, I don't know if I still like the under at 38, but that's definitely the way I would lean. Uh, in addition to these not being great offenses, playing against probably better defenses, they both tend to run the ball, which uh, kind of slows the pace of the game and uh, limits scoring as well. So I see Seattle winning a close one here, low scoring. Um, I like Seattle minus the three and a half, and I like uh, the under. Like I said, now it's at 38, so... Not as great as it was. Chargers at Carolina. We're going to target Carolina all year. I'd take the Chargers minus six and a half. Uh, there's some actual different bets that we made with this uh, for, for the members that give you a little more built-in protection. Um, however, uh, Carolina is, uh, again, a team that we're probably going to target most of the year. The offense is really bad, and uh, teams are, are going to score on the defense. The only concern here is that the Chargers really don't have a lot of firepower. Okay, Giants and Washington. I'm going to avoid this one. Uh, Washington minus one and a half at home is probably the way I lean if I had to pick someone here. Uh, I just don't know enough about these teams beyond that I don't think either of them is going to be good. So maybe this is an indicator of which of these bad teams is worse. All right, you know I'm definitely going to be watching a lot of the Tampa Bay and Detroit game. Just want to keep seeing how their offenses evolve. You know I'm higher on Tampa Bay than most people, but I'm also high on Detroit. Uh, minus seven is a big number here. Um, so that's not the way we're going to actually bet this game. But I do obviously like Detroit to win at home against Tampa Bay. Cleveland at Jacksonville. Uh, this is kind of scary because uh, I'm not all in on Trevor Lawrence. And I made a bet before the season where I, I had taken Cleveland, which I kind of regret now because I knew Deshaun Watson was bad. But it just looks like it's getting scary worse. And I thought they'd be able to run the ball better. Um, you know. Maybe they just weren't able to do that the, the first week. But if you can't run on Dallas, that's kind of scary. I know they they have added some defensive tackles and they had Kendrick at linebacker. So maybe that's a, a completely different run defense. But I see Jacksonville winning pretty big here just because of Cleveland's ineptitude on offense. I think Jacksonville is going to get plenty of chances. And they'll be able to put up enough points to win comfortably in this game at home. The Rams at Arizona. I like the Rams here on the road. You're getting points. Uh, this is a great opportunity to go uh, money line Rams as well. Um, I think I just think that they're going to pull it off. I think they got a better roster from top to bottom. And as we said the other day, yeah, they have some injuries on their offensive line. I don't know if Arizona's the team that's going to be able to take advantage of that. And if Stafford's standing upright, you know, I can easily see him dropping a 30-piece. So this is one you might want to look at to attack the over as well. Even though 49's a, a pretty big number, I could see this uh, comfortably passing the 49 mark. Cincinnati at Kansas City. Again... <laughs> These are the ones that kill me. 
Let me know what you think in the comment section. Just from what I've seen, I expect Kansas City to win by like 10. Uh, I, I feel like they're a completely better team. But some reason, when these teams play each other, Cincinnati seems to figure it out. But I'm going to ignore all that and just kind of go with the facts of how these teams match up. And like I said, I feel like Kansas City is just better everywhere. So at home minus six, I really like Kansas City. The Steelers on the road at Denver. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh here. They're laying three as a road favorite, which is always scary. And laying any points with Pittsburgh in general is scary because their offense is horrendous. But after the way they got me with my one loss uh, week one against Atlanta, remember I told myself, say the name TJ Watt before you bet against Pittsburgh. And there's no reason to ever bet on Denver. So we're going to go Pittsburgh minus three here in a low scoring game with a ridiculously low 36.5 number think about that uh, not too many times you see a number lower than 36.5 definitely not times recently can't think of one off the top of my head i have to look at my spreadsheet uh from when i used to track all that da data but uh 36 and a half is a really low number okay then we have the sunday night game uh bears in prime time i mean I guess everyone gets to see Caleb Williams. He has not been as advertised so far. I think uh, Houston stomps them at home and wins by double digits. So take Houston comfortably minus six and a half. You know, unless Chicago's offense has huge improvements, I think they're just going to get left in the dust. And finally, we got the Monday night game. We got Atlanta and they are at Philadelphia. So Atlanta's getting six and a half. I'm going to trust them one more time here. This is not how we actually bet this game, but just for the purposes of this drill, we'll say we take Atlanta plus six and a half. Again, members kind of check out the bets and we're always available for all questions at any time. And as always, thanks for watching.